Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at communication between fragments. Now the key here is that we don't want one fragment to directly instruct another fragment what to do. So for this example application I'd like to make it so that when I click one of the items in this list it changes to the corresponding item in this top fragment here. But I don't want to have this fragment, the lower one, tell the top one what to do directly because if you build an application with a bunch of fragments or components of any kind that are telling each other what to do you end up with a sort of rat's nest where it becomes very hard to keep track of the communication between the different parts of your application so what you want to do is you want to route all the communication through some kind of central class which we call typically the controller and in this case the controller is going to be our activity so the paradigm that we're going to use here is the activity will listen to what's happening in its fragments and if something happens in a particular fragment it will then tell other fragments what to do in response so we've got the activity acting as a kind of controller class if you know model view controller and the pattern that we're going to implement here is known as the observer pattern or I sometimes call it the listener event pattern which I think is more descriptive but it's, it's technically known as the observer pattern and it often gives um, beginners or people who haven't done any GUI stuff before a bit of a it presents a bit of a learning curve but if you do find what we're about to do at all tricky my advice is just type it out and make it work and, and don't sweat about it because gradually your brain will come to understand it if you just get used to typing it and making it work. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is in my course list fragment here I've, I've actually, I'm actually setting the data that this course list fragment uses but I want that data to be usable also by my product, I think I call it, called it my product fragment here I want my two fragments to use the same data so I'm going to take this data out of here and put it in the main activity so let's just cut this and I'm going to leave a note here just in case you come looking for this and don't find it I'm going to say data now initialized initialized in main activity and this, this, this stuff here I just put in as an example and I'm going to therefore comment that out. So let's um, actually, I I, don't, I might want to use that, I don't know. Well, I'll think about it later, but for now, to get this to compile, I'll comment this out. And if you've been doing a lot of programming for a long while, you'll know that keeping your code compiling is always a healthy thing to do. And if you haven't, then I strongly recommend to do that. So I've got that data and I'm going to use it to initialize my fragment down here and I'm also going to go back to my course list fragment and here's the actual reference to the, the course list data. I need that in main activity as well. So now I've moved all the data to my main activity and now what I can do is I can get my fragments and initialize them with that data and then I can go on to handle the communication between them. So it's kind of a two-step thing that I'm doing here. And now to actually get the fragments, I it's it's best not to use find view by ID, but use get fragment manager dot get dot find fragment by ID. And the fragment manager will look at a bit more shortly, perhaps in the next tutorial, and that can manage you like a stack of fragments. I'm going to say here yeah, it's exactly like doing find view by ID. And we say we, we say find fragment by id dot r dot id dot and then the id of the fragment and I've got a fragment here called product probably should have called it product fragment really and I've also got a fragment called list so this is my list fragment course list fragment so let's say course list fragment and I need to typecast the return value of this to let's call it course list fragment equals 
uh, calls this fragment get fragment manager dot find fragment by ID because this just returns a fragment and I want this specific fragment here. Then I can create my array adapter and instead of saying get activity now, I can just say this for the first argument. And then instead of saying set list adapter here, I'm going to say course list fragment dot set list adapter. And I need to put the semicolon in there. And let's run this and check that it still works just as before, which uh, again is always a very good thing to do. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm also going to initialize my product fragment with the same data. So I've got another fragment here that I want to use the same data. So let's just do the same thing again. And I'm going to go down here, let's copy that, and then let's say product fragment and Let's change the typecast and change this to product, which was the ID of my product fragment. And I'll change this name to product fragment. There we go. And the applications just come up on my phone. So if I look at the screencast, which is here somewhere, there we go. It looks the same as it did before, which is great. So it's, it's finding the data and it's being initialized correctly. And with the product fragment, let's let's take a closer look at that. So this is um, just based on the fragment class directly. And I need some kind of method here to actually set the details. So in on create view, I'm actually setting just dummy details here that I'm hard coding in. And I want a method that sets a particular um, course for this here. So I'm gonna give it a method public void set course and this here, of course set course is just because I'm working with these course objects that I've created but this will be set whatever you want it to be and then let's supply it with a course reference here and then let's take the initialization code out of here so I still want the inflator code in there but all this stuff that's actually getting the um, getting the course I want to it's actually dealing with um, sending the details of the course I want to put it down here in set course and I need to get my view here and um, to do that I'm just going to call get view so I'm going to say view view equals get view so the, the view is still created in on create view. It's inflated from the XML there. But then later on when I do set course, I get that view that's already been created and I set the details on it. And now the details that I want to set are now gonna be, they're gonna be stuff from this course that I pass in to set course. So I'll say get drawable and the ID of that will be ID and the text here for the title will be course.getTitle and the text for the description course.getDescription and again let's check that that works because I like, I like to build things up step by step and I'll go to my main activity here and so in the main activity we've got the data here and we've got the product fragment. So let's say product fragment dot set course and let's say course um I need the list yeah courses which is my list of courses dot get and let's just get the first course there and that should do the trick and let's just take a look there what that will actually be. Actually I'll run it first to save time. And if I go to courses here, course list, and press F3, then I can see the definition. So the first course should be this Java for beginners. So again, the application should look unchanged if I've got everything right. And if I haven't, then it's going to probably say that it's stopped or something. 
So it's starting on my phone and I'm going to go to the screencast and here we are. That's what it should look like. The formatting's not great. Actually it looks a lot better on my phone because this um, this screencast is like one and a half times real size so it looks a bit ropey on here. And of course I could go to more trouble. But now let's get on to the important bit which is now communicating between these two fragments because now I've got my data in one central place in this kind of controller main activity class and I've got I've got references to both of my fragments and what I want to do is I want to listen to my course list fragment and when something happens in there I then want my activity to say okay someone's clicked a course in the course list and it will then tell product fragment what to do and to achieve that first I'm going to go to my course list fragment and I'm going to give this a interface that defines how a listener to this course list fragment should look. So I'm going to say here public interface public interface and let's call this something like on course on course item click listener so this, this has a capital letter because it's a, it's a type, it's an interface and now, now in here I can give like the stub of a method that uh, this interface specifies a implementing class should have and I'll just say something like public void and lowercase o because this is a method on item on course item clicked and I need to pass the item that's actually been clicked so let's pass this um, I could pass the, the position or the ID of the item in fact that would be a very good idea because I don't even have direct access to the data here so what I'm going to do is pass the ID the position of the item that's been clicked so the bottom line is we just define an interface and this, this is just defining the idea of a class that could then receive information about a particular course item being clicked and another thing I need to do in here is I need to give it a private on course item click listener so this is a private variable of the type of the interface that I'm defining here and let's call this on course item click listener and I'll copy that and now in on this item click what I say is if on course item click listener is not equal to null then I call its method on course item click listener dot on course item clicked not equals, it's the wrong autocomplete um, on course item clicked and I pass in a position there so if you're not familiar with the observer pattern uh, and you could Google, Google for it and you'll find stuff on it but this is one chunk of it we define an interface and I define a variable of which has the type of that interface so it can refer to an object that impl implements that interface and then later on I say if that variable is actually pointing at an object call that object on course item clicked method if a list item is actually clicked and we'll pass in the position of the item that's being clicked as well now the other bit here is now this bit you probably will be familiar with because you will have done it before when you were listening to buttons and that kind of thing in the main activity now so in main activity then I'm gonna I've got a reference to my uh, course list fragment here and I'm gonna say I'm gonna add a listener to that in fact let's do it way down here because at this point I've got references to both fragments available and I'm gonna say course list fragment dot set on I actually didn't, I forgot to implement that. Let's go back. So course list fragment here. 
I need to give this a method that enables me to set this, which I completely forgot. So I'm going to just right click in here and go, I'm going to go to source, generate getters and setters and expand on course site and click listener and say that I, I'm going to generate a setter for that. Click OK. So we've got the interface definition. We've got a variable of the type of that interface. We've got a set method that lets us set that variable and in on list item click we are checking to see if that variable points at something and if it does we're calling a method in the object that that variable references. And I'll go back now to main activity and now I can do what I was trying to do just then. I can call course list item course list fragment dot set on course item click listener and I can supply this an anonymous class of that interface type so let's say new on course item click listener actually it's going to be new new course list fragment list fragment dot on dot on course item click listener it's a bit of a mouthful and this is a lot like the code that we've been using to respond to button clicks we've just implemented our own version of what buttons buttons do and then so when an item's clicked it will this method will be called in the anonymous in this anonymous this object here which is an object of an anonymous class we're, we're passing an object to course list fragment and course list fragment is calling that object's method so this here is actually calling this method here and as I say if this seems totally perplexing my advice is type it out two or three times and it will gradually become a lot clearer and uh, in this method all I need to do now is I need to say let's get the appropriate course so course course equals course list course list um, did I call it course list oh it's courses actually courses this is my data which is up here and that's just an array list it just extends an array list courses.get position this is the position of the course that was clicked in the list and now I tell my product fragment what to do. I say product fragment dot set course and pass in that course. So I'm responding to what happens in one fragment and then I'm telling another fragment what to do. And I'll just save that. And because this is in an anonymous method, to refer to this product fragment, I've either got to make this um, this definition of it final or else make it a private variable and um, some people have said to me if you make this variable final doesn't that mean you can't then change the object that it references and the answer to that is no that just means you can't then make this refer to a different fragment but you can still change the object you can still change you can still do stuff with the object it references you just can't change this reference to refer to a different object and we don't want to anyway so that's absolutely fine and now finally if I've got all that right this should work so I'll click run uh, whoops yeah there we go and um, yeah as I say just to repeat if you are reading from shock at this point then um, I advise typing it out and you could also google observer pattern but really just typing is uh, it's a good way to get it into your head and if you're not too familiar with interfaces or anonymous classes then check out my free Java for Beginners class uh, course which you can find on caveofprogramming.com okay so it's now running on my phone and I'm just gonna somehow the application went away again but I'm just gonna click recent apps and go to the right app here and here we have it oh there we go yeah, it's coming okay and now if I click um, I'm going to touch learn Android development here and it's changed to the correct um, product and I can click different products here and display details of different ones 
So that's fragment communication. I hope that wasn't too bad. And that is, this is really an absolutely standard technique that's widely, widely used in GUI programming in Swing, for example. And variants on this technique, the observer pattern, are used even in other languages. So it's it's really well well worth learning this. And it is it is one of the more slightly complicated things that you can learn in this kind of programming, but it will stand you in good stead. And once you understand it, you'll see it's not as bad as it perhaps first appears. So that's it for this tutorial. And until next time, happy coding.